Embo oral history stretches back to around the 16th century when the ancestors, together with those of the Chuka, Kikuyu, Ndia, and possibly those of the Mbeere and Meru people, began moving south from Igembe and Tigania in the Nyambene hills in the northeast of Mount Kenya. Other sources speculate that the area from which they came was further north in present-day Ethiopia and is referred to as Tuku or Uru in oral history. They subsequently intermarried with the Dagisu people and settled around Idanga Hill to the south of Mount Kenya. Famine pushed them off and so from Idanga they moved to their present location. It seems likely that other groups of people coming later from different directions also joined the Embu. Our tradition is somewhat muddled in this aspect and holds that one group came from Weru direction near Moya in the south and that another, if not all the tribe, came from the Indian Ocean where originally every tribe lived. Someday, all the tribes moved across the ocean and came to settle in their present area, the Kamba, Giriama, Nika, Diko, and Bere and Kikuyu, according to Mwaneki. There's also a connection with a place called Ovarire, which is in present-day Mbeere territory, in the foothills of the Kiangombe Hills. The confusion might be explained by one elder quoted by Mwaneki who said, of course, when the Europeans asked where we came from, we had to lie. We lied because they would have displaced us and told them that we came from Erimba, the Red Reeds, and, and Kimbu. What is certainly accepted by all is that Ndega is the ancestral name of the Embu community after the first Embu ancestor who was called Mwanendega. He lived in a groove known by his name, which is now near Runyanja's town, but no one knows where he came from or when he settled in his groove. He took a wife whom he named Dara. The first two children were, were a boy named Kembu and a girl named Werimba, although there's a confusion about whether she was Kembu's sister or daughter. Whatever, the two committed incest and were expelled from their forest, so they settled near Karongo, where they lived as a man and wife. Other daughters of Mwenendega and Dara and those of Kembu and Verimba married and established homes throughout Embu country. Their descendants became known as the children of Kembu or Embu for short. The importance of daughters who suggest that society was originally matriarchal. The origins of Mbeere. Most written sources say that the origins of the Mbeere was the same as the as those for the Bantu speaking Kikoyu, Embu, Chuka, and Meru people, namely that their ancestors moved eastwards from Central Africa sometime before the 16th century and had settled in the Nyambene Hills. From there, say the same sources, the people moved slowly southwards into the foothills of Mount Kenya, where they settled and gradually acquired their present day tribal identities. Well, that's the anthropological theory for what it's worth. In fact, some very elders believe quite the contrary, stating that some, if not all of the Mbere's ancestors came from the east, from the direction of Mombasa on the coast, which ties in with some of the traditions relating to the Embu mentioned above. All four Mbere elders interviewed by Kabesha Moneki were anonymous that the Mbere and Embu were once one people. This is strongly indicated by Mbere oral history which also includes the Embu ancestor Kembu. They call him Moembu. The twist though is that the, his mother, who, the daughter of some, someone called Mbere or Mbere. This would indicate that the two tribes are not only related but that the Mbere could in fact be considered ancestors of the Embu. This would certainly explain their close and amicable ties which have persisted to their present day. Why the Mbere split from the Embu? 
Oral history has it that the Mbere were forced to split from the Embu following a dispute which came about during a mock battle in which the two peoples honored their skills. Instead of swords, they used fighting sticks. But one fateful day, some bear decided to use real swords and ended up killing and injuring several Embu warriors. As a result, they were expelled and were forced to settle in the less fertile Kyangombe hills. Another version of the same story, recounted by Elder quoted by Siaronji Chesaina, says, Now the Embu used to beat the bear very often. A bear person could not utter a word when an Embu person was talking. There were even times when an Embu person could eat food while Ambere was just watching and only gave him some when he himself was full. Mbere people had nicknamed Embu people the clan of rebels because of their stubbornness were the Embu and nicknamed the Mbere the clan of famine because of their being denied food. Now one time Embu and Bere made a date to fight and finish all their conflicts now on the day of the fight, Mbere brought sticks as their weapons, where Embu brought swords to disguise the sticks. The war which was fought, the Mbere were beaten. The Embu pushed the Mbere until Kiathiga, while the Embu went to live in Mothiru. That is when the Mbere started to live in the Sunday land, where crops cannot grow, while the Embu built their homes near the forest on productive land. Yet another story says the reason for the split was that an Embu man eloped with the daughter of a bear called Siandega and had to flee from the wrath of the girl's father. The man and Siandega eventually said that the Dega's groove for the man was none other than Monendega, the father of all Embu people. Kararari Bato Despite being related to the other people around Mount Kenya, relations with their neighbors have been far from peaceful and the Embu people have fought the Chuka, Kikuyu, Maasai and Kamba. The interaction with the Maasai Nandres brought new influences to bear on Embu and Bere culture and is believed to be the reason for the latter adopting the tradition of circumcision. The story of the fight against the Kamba at Kararari is a popular one. The Kamba were at this time suffering a famine in their homeland of the Ukambani hills and came to sack the smaller and weaker Mbeere. Women and livestock were taken, hearts were burned, and as the Mbeere could not even approach the Kamba for their arrows, they abandoned their land and fled to the Embu. Encouraged by the rout, the Kamba began pushing into Embu territory but at a place called Kadongori, the camp was besieged by the Embu. The Kamba shot furiously, but the Embu placed their shields on the ground to form a wall of shields. To break the standoff, the Embu called for rain, chewing Sodom Apos. They shouted, It's water, it's water, to the Kamba. To their aid came a heavy downpour, so heavy that it made the Kamba's bow string so slippery that they could not even shoot any longer. The Embu advanced towards the defenseless Kamba and cut them down with swords, spears and clubs. Then came cries of Nyanekeveti from some of the warriors which meant we are women. This was the Kamba way of surrendering and those who cried out were captured instead of killed. Those who managed to escape were chased by the Embu until they crossed the Dagana river. The defeat was so great that this was the first and only time that the Kamba ever considered attacking the Embu. The battle would appear to have taken place relatively recently. An elder in 1969 said that there might be one or two survivors of the battle still left. Subscribe, like and share. Hit the notification bell to get notification when we upload future videos. Until next time, bye bye.